What's going on party people? Kyle again here and today we are going to be experimenting. We're going to be seeing how you can manipulate SVG with CSS. Uh, this has by far been my most requested video so hopefully this will appease some of you folks and maybe help you out. Um, if not, I'm sorry. Better, not, better luck next time. Uh, so yeah, how can we manipulate SVG via CSS? Well, there's actually quite a bit you can do, um, at least in the latest Chrome. That's all I've tested these out in. And if I had my guess, I would say that browser support is very spotty on this sort of stuff. Uh, but yeah, this is just to kind of uh, show you where the future lies, um, perhaps how this stuff can evolve and um, how we can better integrate SVG into our current workflow uh, with CSS and that sort of stuff. So you'll notice I'm on CodePen. Let's go ahead and dig in. Um, I've set up a very basic SVG, uh, 100 pixel by 100 pixel SVG uh, with a centered little rectangle here. <clears throat> and you'll notice over here in the JavaScript pane, I've just got a list of things I've found that you can actually declare um, via CSS and also that you can transition with CSS. So let's just go through the list very quickly and I'm gonna demonstrate all this stuff for you. First and foremost, the width and height on an SVG. You can absolutely uh, declare that in CSS. So we can go width 10%, height 10%. So you can make it fluid if you want. Um, you will notice that, and actually let's go ahead and go down to the second one here is the background on an SVG. So just so we can see what we're doing, you can declare a red background. Um, you will notice that by default, this smaller rectangle is completely centered within your overall SVG element. Um, if we try and make the SVG itself fluid, then it, it skews, it doesn't work. And the way we remedy that is to strip out our, uh, or actually you don't even have to strip it out. Um, you can just leave your default width and height and then just give it a view box of 0, 0, 100, 100. And you will now notice that it scales. Um, and essentially, if you don't declare a view box, then you're not declaring an artboard, um, if you're thinking in terms of Illustrator. So this is your canvas. It's, all, it's 100 pixels by 100 pixels. And if you want everything that's within that canvas to scale, um, then you need to, to declare a view box. Um, so yeah, what's next? Oh, you can also, instead of declaring just a straight color background on your SVG element or an image or something like that, you can also do a gradient. So we could go background, linear gradient, to bottom, and let's just do blue at 0% and red at 100%. Let's see how that works. There you go. And you can see it picks it right up. Um, let's go ahead and comment all this out we don't really need it right now. Um, SVG or uh, CSS filters. So one thing I've, I've very inadvertently found is that on the SVG element, it's, it's like any other HTML element. You can declare uh, a drop shadow. So if you want to go WebKit um, filter, drop shadow, three pixels, three pixels black. It'll totally pick it up. Now, if you declare, you'll notice that it actually picked up on the path or the uh, the rectangle itself. If you declare a background color on your SVG or any sort of background, then you'll notice that it picks up on the actual uh, SVG element itself. So we'll comment all that stuff out. And we'll move on here. So let's dig into our rectangle here now or it could be a circle, or it could, could be a um, path, or any of that sort of stuff, you're, you're always going to be able to declare a fill. So instead of having a black rectangle, let's have a blue one. There you go. Um, let's give it a stroke, which you're actually, it's a little different when you're declaring a stroke, you're actually declaring the color. So let's say red. You'll notice it picked that up. Um, and let's do a stroke width. Uh, five, uh, excuse me, five pixels. There we go. Okay. 
you can declare an opacity. Actually, let's, I've already got these sectioned off. Let's move this stuff down here. So for stroke, we can give it a red stroke with a stroke width of 5 pixels. And then under opacity, let's just do 0.65. And you'll notice it inherits all that stuff. It's very cool. You can also transform. Uh, use CSS transforms. Very quickly, I'm going to dig in here to our settings, and I'm going to go prefix free because I absolutely hate prefixes. You should always be using prefix free, by the way. Um, and let's transform this bad boy. Let's go transform scale 1.2. And you'll notice that it scales. Um, you will notice that relative to the the actual artboard, the view box, it scaled from the top left. And if you wanted to alleviate that, if you wanted it to actually transform from the center, you would just do transform origin center. And you'll notice it moves back over. Um, let's see. You can actually do keyframe key animations. So at keyframe move we can just go to from background blue background green and then on that look to test this out let's just give it um, a hover so let's go SVG, hover, rectangle, animation, move, two seconds. Oh, I messed my syntax up somehow. How'd that work? Very quickly, let's move over here and do CSS. Well, that's slowing to a crawl. Let's not worry about that right now. Anyway, trust me, you can definitely animate. We're going to comment that out. Okay, gradients. How would you declare a gradient on your lovely SVG element? Well, you can't give it a CSS gradient. That's just not a possibility right now. Maybe someday in the near future. Um, but what you can do is you can embed um, any sort of gradient within your SVG and then call that in your CSS. So we have defined a linear gradient with an ID of gradient here. Um, so all we have to do is give it a fill and a URL of pound gradient and you'll notice that it picks it up. Let's go back up here and I'm going to comment this stuff out as well. just because we don't need it right now. And let's go back down here. So we have this not so subtle gradient on our rectangle. Now you'll notice that the rectangle itself has a stop attribute and it has offset and stop color. Can you change those properties? Yeah, yeah you can. Um, so let's go rectangle uh, or actually we're going to target the gradient and stop and let's say uh, excuse me let's go first child here because we only want to target the first one and let's go to stop color and make it blue and you'll notice it changed if you wanted to manipulate the second one you could go gradient stop last child stop color green there you go um, and you can manip you can change those on hover as well um, you can transition those so let's go um, SVG 
hover. SVG hover. And you'll notice that once you hover, these uh, gradients change. And you can actually transition those as well. Um, we can go gradient, stop, uh, transition, 0.5 seconds all. And you'll notice that the gradient changes on hover. So this is the kind of stuff that, that I've discovered that you can mess around with with CSS. You can really, there are some properties that just can't, that they're always going to be static, and unless you're using JavaScript, you can't really manipulate them, but a lot of stuff you can play around with. So let's comment this out. Let's move down our list here again. Uh, and display none. That's easy enough. So you can always remove them. That's cool. Um, let's dig down into our transitions. Um, so you already saw that you can transition a linear gradient or any sort of gradient. You could do a radial gradient as well. But what else can you transition? Um, you can transition your width and height on your SVG element. So yes, for sanity's sake, let's go ahead and give this a transition of 0.5 seconds all. SVG hover. We're going to give it a width of 20% and a height of 20%. And you'll notice that the overall SVG element definitely does scale. We'll comment that out. And you can transition fill. So we're going to go down here to our fill. Uncomment it. And actually, just to save time, let's go ahead and give a universal rectangle with a transition of five seconds all. So I don't have to keep uncommenting and commenting stuff out. And we'll leave this fill alone and just give it a hover state. So SVG hover, rectangle, and let's give it a fill of green. You'll notice that that transitions very nicely. You can transition stroke and stroke width so let's just do SVG hover rectangle stroke yellow and stroke width of 8 pixels so let's hover over this again and you will notice that it picks up on all that stuff pretty cool let's keep going down the line here you can transition opacity so let's go SVG hover rectangle opacity one and it it inherits that that's cool what else can we do you can transform uh, use your CSS transforms that'll definitely work here we go for simplicity's sake I'm gonna comment the prior transitions out again okay so now we're back down here to transform so let's go SVG hover rectangle transform scale point eight And sure enough, it is transforming. It is scaling. You can also do a rotate. There you go. And you can translate it. Let's move it over to the left or to the right um, 20 pixels. There you go. It's moving. So there you go. Uh, what else can we do here? We can transition keyframe animations. And I've forgotten the syntax and I don't feel like looking it up. So 
you guys can play around with that. Um, and yeah, that's about it for our experimentation. A couple of things that I do want to say um, about your paths, your rectangles, um, your circles, any, any sort of element that's within your SVG. These are the things that you cannot declare on it. So if I go back up here to rectangle, and let's say I want to declare a Z index um, of negative one. And I wanted to Yeah, let's just do this. Let's do rectangle, first child, and we're going to give it a fill of red. And then we're going to do rectangle, uh, last child, a fill of blue. Okay, um, and let's transform this one. Just to see what we're working with here. There we go. <clears throat> okay. So now you'll see that we have two rectangles slightly overlapping. Um, and let's say that I wanted this blue one to overlap this one, or to go beyond, behind the red one. Well, that just wouldn't be possible using Z-index. It just it doesn't work. In order to uh, actually move these elements, uh, the layered, uh, excuse me, I can't even think. If you want one to be on top of the other, uh, that is not that way by default, then you would actually have to reorder these things in your HTML. So you'd have to do that via JavaScript. Uh, maybe one day that would be awesome if they could implement Z-index on these items um, in CSS, but just for right now it's not, not happening. Um, you cannot de uh, declare a position. So you can't say position absolute zero, zero or something like that. You can't declare visibility. You can declare display none, but you can't declare visibility and then border radius is also off the table. Um, so on a rectangle, for instance, if you want to do a border radius, uh, you would do like Rx equals 10, something like that, and you'll notice that it will um, pick up a nice border radius here. Okay, uh, I think that's it for me today. It's been a nice 18-minute uh, video for you guys, just quickly going over this stuff. Uh, and it was a little sloppy, I apologize, I haven't had much time this week to kind of iron all these details out. But this is mainly about experimentation, it's about uh, finding out what we can do to manipulate SVG with CSS, and I hope you learned some stuff, and I hope this kind of gets your creative ju juices uh, flowing. I will be posting up this code pen, I'm going to clean it up a bit, and then put it up on code pen and link it in the description below. And I invite you to, you know, fork it and to play around with it and to discover a lot of stuff that I haven't even thought about. So, yeah, until next time, guys, rock on.